Hi, earlier this year I retrofitted an old MCO50 CNC lathe and I was looking for a small project to get some experience with the machine and the new controller. Since I use my 3D printer quite a lot, trying to make my own nozzle for it seemed like a good idea. In this video I will cover the entire process including programming, tool selection, work holding, making the nozzles and some testing. Stefan from CNC Kitchen also made a video on making his own V6 nozzles on a manual lathe. I will link to that in the description below. This video will mostly focus on the workflow for a small CNC lathe. So let's get into it. My Prusia Mini uses nozzles that are compatible with the E3D V6 hot end, so I assume that the nozzles are also the same. There are two open source designs for this type of nozzle. The older one can be made with regular drill bits, while the newer design would require a custom drill bit with a 60 degree top angle. So to keep it simple, I will stick with the old design. I'm going for a 0.4mm nozzle diameter, since I already have this diameter installed on the 3D printer, and I can use that as a reference for any testing, which is covered later on in the video. The nozzles can be made out of brass material from 7mm hex bar stock, which is commonly available online. I got mine from Conrad, which is a German company that also ships to the Netherlands, where I live. My lathe can hold a maximum of 6 tools in the turret, so I tried to come up with a cutting strategy that would allow me to cut both sides of the nozzle, given this restriction, so I wouldn't have to do any intermediate tool changes between operations. Although you can also manually program the SGH controller for a part like this, I decided to use Fusion 360 for this project. The free version of Fusion 360 allows you to create toolpaths for turning operations, but there are some limitations. The most important limitation for me is that the rapid moves between passes are disabled, and also tool changes are disabled. So you have to generate a program for each tool individually, and then stitch the program together in a text editor. For the sake of time, I will only do a quick high-level overview of the CAD CAM for this project. I have noticed that people start dropping off the minute I start talking about software in any of my videos, so I promise to keep it as short as possible. I made a CAD model for the nozzle from the 2D drawing that I found online. As mentioned, I started with the 0.4mm nozzle diameter. In the manufacturing workspace, I first created what is called a setup. This contains basic parameters for your project, like machine type and stock. For the stock, I made a 3D model of a hexagonal piece of bar stock, which is 1mm longer than my part. For programming, I will center this around the part, so it will have excess material of 0.5mm on each side, which can be removed with a facing operation to make sure that the part is nice and flat. In this simulation, you can see all the tool paths. First, I am starting off with two facing passes, bringing the material to the correct length. The same tool is then used to perform roughing operations, where it is creating the outer contour of the part. This is followed up by a finishing pass, which is run at a lower feed rate and a smaller cut depth to leave a nice surface finish. After this we have a tool change to the threading tool that generates the M6 thread. This thread is used to screw the nozzle into the heater block on the 3D printer. The threading operation is divided up into five passes, each only about 0.1 mm in depth, to make sure the lathe and the threading insert can handle the cuts. When this is done, there are two consecutive drilling operations. First with the 2 mm drill, and then with the 1.5 mm drill, that will go a bit deeper to create the desired geometry. The final cut on this side is with the parting tool, to separate the part from the bar stock, and allow it to be cut on the other side. For the second operation, after the part is flipped around in a chuck, again we start with the facing operation. The same tool is then used to perform a roughing operation, followed by a shallow finish pass. And lastly, the hole in the front of the nozzle is drilled, in this case with a 0.4mm drill bit. When this is done, we should end up with a completed V6 style nozzle. So let's go to the lathe and get it ready to turn this part. The lathe has three holes that are 10 mm in diameter. In order to align the drill bits with the center line of the spindle, some additional setup work is required. The X position of the tool can be set in the tool table, but the height needs to be adjusted physically. I did this by placing shims under the turret, 
until it was at the correct height. To verify this, I placed a 4 jaw chuck on the spindle for holding a 10mm round bar. The round bar is actually a piece of scrap left over from cutting the tool holders to size. The 4 jaw chuck allows you to perfectly center the round bar with the spindle center line, since you can individually move the jaws. Once the bar is centered, you can use this to verify if the tool position in the turret is at the correct height. If the bar can pass through the turret without hitting it, the height is correct. Shimming the turret takes a bit of time, but you can get the tool very close to the center using this method. The height of the other positions is not by definition correct after setting one position. If the turret is not mounted perfectly concentric, the other positions will still deviate. I did not check concentricity, but found that the other positions were close enough when they were rotated into place. Maybe later I will have a look at this to see if I can get it perfect on height for each one of the positions. After setting the tool height, I replaced the 4 jaw chuck again with the 3 jaw version. The 3 jaw chuck is much easier to use and it can hold a hex piece of bar stock. This does come at the cost of less accuracy in terms of centering your parts. I fitted an ER11 collet holder in each one of the tool positions, in the order that they would be needed to make the V6 nozzle. The collet holders are available with different nut types, called A, M or UM. The A type might come with a bit coarser thread, but for the ones that I have, the A and M nut have the same thread. I am placing the tool into the mounting hole with the flat side facing the grub screws. So even if there are any burrs from tightening the screws, they will not lead to the tool getting stuck. The drilling tools are still clear of the chuck, even when the other cutting tools are all the way in towards the center of the part. The clearance might seem very small, but everything is scaled down here. Small lathe, small clearances. After this, I performed tool setting for all of the tools. I'm using the main cutting tool as a reference for all of the tools for setting the Z offset. This is done by facing the part off manually with the reference tool and then to jog each one of the other tools to the face of the part until they almost make contact. I will not describe the entire tool setting procedure in this video since that is a bit too detailed. All of the cutting tools I use are carbide inserts, made specifically for cutting aluminum and other non-ferrous materials like brass. The inserts have a very sharp cutting edge, a negative rake angle and a very smooth and shiny top surface. 
The shiny top surface is actually an easy way to identify aluminum inserts, besides looking at the packaging of course. There's an ISO designation that can be found on most labels that indicates which materials can be cut with a specific tool. In this case I'm using inserts of the N type for non-ferrous materials. The main turning insert is a 55 degree type with a 0.4 mm radius. The reason for this is that I already had it installed and it cuts quite nicely. An alternative would be a 35 degree insert with a 0.2 mm tool radius. This can reach further into small features and both the sharp top angle as well as the smaller tip radius should lead to lower cutting forces. Having said this, the 55 degree insert works fine, so I will stick to that for now. The threading insert is a typical three-sided insert, also intended for non-ferrous materials. Lastly, this is the insert used for parting off. It took me quite a while to find these and they are a bit expensive at around 80 euros for a box of 10 pieces. However, with the limited experience that I have with them, they seem to be a perfect fit for the job. They are only 1mm wide and have a very sharp cutting edge. Both lead to a very smooth cutting behavior. The inserts are of the CTPA type and require a matching tool holder. Let's have a look at the first operation. We start off with the 55 degree insert. This is moved to the C0 position before the cycle, so I know up to which point the bar stock needs to be pulled out. First it is roughing out the bulk of the material. I am speeding up some of the footage, because in real time, up one will take over 4 minutes. Here we have the finish pass. The threading operation runs at only 900 RPMs, resulting in a feed rate of 900 mm per minute, which I think is fast enough for this old lathe. This does mean that the cutting speed is a bit low for brass, but it still leaves a decent finish. This is the drilling cycle with the 2 mm drill bit. I manually added a single retraction move halfway through the cycle to evacuate the chips and to prevent the drill from clogging up. This is followed up by a 1.5mm drill bit that makes a small, more narrow section at the bottom of the hole. Finally, I am parting off the nozzle with a 1mm parting tool. For this parting operation, the feed rate is reduced when the tool is getting closer to the center. It halts 0.6mm before center. If you go all the way down to the center with the parting tool, the part flies off and you will have to find it somewhere between the chips. If it is still attached to a small section, it is easy to just break it off from the stock material. To hold the part for the second operation, I made a special holder out of some brass bar stock, since I did not want to hold the part by the threads in the 3 jaw chuck. I made this part manually, since it was a one-off part. I faced the front of the bar stock to get a nice flat surface. For simplicity's sake, I chamfered the sharp edges with a file. For creating the inner thread to mount the nozzle, a 6mm hole was drilled. This was then threaded with a manual tap.
It is important to keep the tap centered to prevent the tap from coming in at an angle. I do not have a special tap holder for the lathe, so I printed an adapter piece that fits onto a B10 taper connection at one end. The other side has a hole that fits around the manual tap and keeps it centered. I am not particularly proud of this design, but it did the job for this one-off part. I should have actually made one with bearings inside, similar to a live center, but that will have to be another project. I used all three taps in the set to come to the final thread dimension. The nozzle can now be threaded into the holder to perform up to. Also here I am moving the cutting tool to the Z0 position to make sure that the part is at the right location as programmed in the CAM software. For OP2 we are again roughing out material. Unfortunately there is quite a bit of eccentricity between the holder and the nozzle which can be clearly seen by the visible runout of the nozzle. I will fix this at some point but decided to go ahead with making some nozzles. Also here we finalize the contour with a finish pass. Lastly, the lathe is drilling the nozzle bore, in this case with the 0.4mm drill bit. I do not have room for an additional spot drill in the tool turret, so I tried to directly drill the 0.4mm hole into the flat face left by the 55 degree insert and hoped for the best. This worked quite well, since the tip of the drill actually moves towards the center even when it is at the slight offset, as is the case here. I later adjusted the tool offset to make sure that I have the hole at the correct size but even now it was finding its way towards the center. After machining, the nozzle does have some burrs at the front and back surfaces, but these can be easily removed with some fine-grained sandpaper. Also, I manually added a small chamfer on the hole at the back side of the nozzle. In order to assess the performance of this nozzle, I first printed the Benchy when the original nozzle was still installed. Replacing the nozzle on a Prusa Mini is very easy, but the whole process can take up to 5 or 10 minutes including calibration. The print head is moved to the most upper position and the temperature of the nozzle is set to 280 degrees C. While holding the heater block with a pair of pliers, I am unscrewing the nozzle with a hex socket. After this, I screwed in the new nozzle and reloaded the filament. For each time you replace the nozzle, it is best to redo the initial height calibration to make sure that the first layer is printed at the correct height. This first test was not really a success. After cutting the nozzle open with a file, I found that the depth of the last section of the bore was not deep enough. I do not have an optical measurement system, but by using a picture taken on my microscope and by playing around with it in Fusion 360, I was still able to get an indication of the whole depth. First I verified the distance in the CAD model for the last section of the hole, which is 0.8 mm. I imported a screenshot for the microscope and calibrated the size of the image based on the hole diameter of the wider section, which in this case is 1.5 mm. If I then measure the length of the last section, it comes to around 0.4 mm, so this is around 0.4 mm too deep. This is probably due to a tool setting error. I think I know where this error came from, but for now I just corrected it and printed a new Benchy. 
Here the print quality was improved and it showed less stringing. However, it was still not at the same level as the part printed with the original nozzle. As a last resort, I increased the retraction length in Prusa Slicer by 25% to a total of 4mm. This even further reduced stringing to a point where I think the print quality is acceptable. The stringing is so light that it can easily be removed by hand. I mostly print far less demanding parts anyway, so I think this homemade nozzle will work for me. I will however have a think about how I can further improve my manufacturing process. It would be nice to be able to make nozzles that are just as good as from the factory. I also tried to make a nozzle with a 0.6mm diameter. The print quality for these nozzles was very poor, again due to retraction issues. So I will have to do some more homework on that process as well. If that works out, I might make a follow-up video, but I also might get distracted with other projects, so no promises. Also, I will probably experiment more with different methods of holding the part on each side. For example, with a four-jaw chuck or a call chuck to reduce front-to-back eccentricity. In case you're wondering why I'm going through all of this trouble to make my own nozzles, when you can get a set of 26 nozzles for only 12 bucks on Amazon, well, that is because I just wanted to learn how to create a workflow for making parts on this lathe. I did pick up some new skills along the way and I hoped you learned something as well from watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like or subscribe to the channel. Please comment down below if you have some tips for me on how to improve this process. Thanks for watching!